Hello uh, everybody, welcome back to the Gregorius Maths video. In this video, I continue to press on with algebraic geometry, and I'm actually going to be generalizing a notion that I introduced in the last video. That is, I'm generalizing rational curves. And so today's video is going to be about my learning on rational maps, which, as I've said before, are a generalization of rational curves and these are this is a very important um thing i I'm, i've been led to believe so far that rational maps and, and birational equivalents which we're going to look at today um is a concept that comes up a lot in algebraic geometry um and so we'll just get into it and um yeah okay so I'm actually going to start straight away with the definition and that is um, if we have um, two things, two polynomials numbers u and v in this function field that we defined yesterday, k of x, for some curve x, then we have v of p equal to u of p, v of p being is a rational map. x to some curve y, um, where p is obviously where these are ranged through all of the points p on the curve x, apart from of course a finite subset where um, u of p or v of p might not be defined, um, that's just a finite subset anyway. Um, so for all p where u and v are defined, um, if v of p is always in y, then phi is a rational is a rational map from x to y. Okay, so that's an, quite a natural definition, and we see that um, you know some stuff that we were doing in the last video. That is, you know, when we parameterized our curve, um, that was actually a rational map between our curve and the line, um, because we took in points of the line and we gave it in, we put it into a rational parameterization, something like this was like t squared minus one and t cubed minus t, I think it was. But anyway, um, so it is a generalization of the stuff we were doing last time. And um, basically we're gonna be looking at birational equivalents, um, a couple of cases of that. And that's really all I wanna talk about right now, just because there's not much to talk about to, um, straight away without, you know, but of course it is an important concept and, you know, we'll be using the term, you know, rational map or birational equivalence or whatever and do stuff like that throughout my series, I believe. Um, and so it's good to do a video on it as well. And it's the natural continuation of what I was doing last time anyway. All right, so enough waffling anyway. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Yeah, okay, so bi a birational equivalence. So X is... So, if there's so say we have a birational map, oh sorry, a rational map phi from x to y. If there's another rational map, so this is again a very natural definition. Psi from y to x, um, such that phi compose psi and psi compose are equal to the appropriate identities, uh, you know, identity on y and identity on x, then these are inverses and y and x are said to be birationally equivalent. Um, and so again, so we can generalise work that we did in the last video to show that um, a, um, a curve, f, which is um, um, consisting of monomials of degrees n minus 1 and n of x of y, um, monomials of degrees n minus one only, then 
by again generalizing what we did last time, we can show that this is equivalent to is birational equivalent to a line. Okay. Now, a little bit more tricky is when we have n, n minus 1, and n minus 2. So, let's write out um, f as being equal to un plus un minus 1 plus un minus 2, where un is of uh, its homogeneous degree n, degree n minus 1, degree n minus 2. Then again, we can cancel out the x to the power of n minus 2 factor, and we should be left with something that looks like um, that will be birationally equivalent to, um, or something that looks like a of t x squared plus b of t x plus c of t where this is um, un of 1t, this is un minus 1 of 1t, and this is un minus 2 of 1t. Um, and so this is birationally, so our thing is birationally equivalent to, so completing the square, it is birationally equivalent to something of the form s squared is equal to p of t. Now what's s? Well, completing the square, we have s equal to 2ax minus b. Uh, of course, assuming we're not in a field of characteristic 2. And p is equal to um, b squared minus 4ac. And so it's birational equivalent to something like this. Now, if p is of an even degree, so of degree 2m, then we can write it as p of t is equal to um, q of t times t minus alpha. And if we divide everybody by t minus alpha to the power of 2m, sorry, what's, what, what even letter is that? Oh yeah, p, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so if we divide everybody by that, then we've shown that this is, and oh, by the way, this thing right here is called a hyperelliptic hyper curve. But anyway, if this is of even, if this of degree 2m, m for mother, for example, then this is going to be birationally equivalent to, um, let's say, Ala squared equal to h of psi, no, not psi, he, she, she, or however you say it, or however you draw it as well, where mu, sorry, not mu, no, eta, eta is equal to um, s over t minus alpha to the m, um, um, psi, uh, he is equal to, um, 1 over t minus alpha, I believe, and h of t, sorry, h of alpha, I mean, c is equal to, um, to um, H S here is actually meant to be defined as Q of T, t over T minus alpha to the 2M minus 1, um, which now that I look back on it is pretty obvious, but um, that should clear that up if, in case I confused you. Um, so yeah, it's Q of T over T minus alpha to the 2M minus 1. So what have I actually yeah. done? So... Um, this is if we have de degrees um, n, n minus 1, and n minus 2 only. 
then this is um, birationally equivalent to a hyperelliptic curve, so something of this form. And if P of T is of some sort of even degree, then it's birationally equivalent to a curve of this form, where the these uh, letters mean these things. Okay, so that's what that's what. So that's a pretty big cluster of symbols, but that's why I'm because I can't be able to write down all the words. Um. Okay, so we're actually surprisingly close already to the end of the video. Um, just one last fact that I want to mention, just because, again, it's important. And it's, it's actually something that you would expect, you would expect it, is that um, k of x is isomorphic to k of y. So these two rational function fields are isomorphic if and only if x is, I'll just write sim a tilde for equivalent, birational equivalent to, because I'm not actually sure what the symbol is, um, but for now I'll just write it like that, if and only if x is birational equivalent to y. And that's, you know, something that you would expect. An important, um, let's say, invariant and an important equivalence relation, you want something like this to hold. In, and so, um, Classifying curves up to birational equivalent is important in algebraic geometry. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically all I want to talk about. Um, next time, I will be looking at singular and non-singular points, and then I'll be talking about the projective plane a little bit. And that will hopefully be done next weekend. And throughout the week, I will be working on exercises for section one and I'll be starting my reading of section two so that hopefully the weekend after that I'll have uh, you know I'll have notes in my head already for section two and what to say about that and um, I'm actually in my last fortnight of school um, so you know just as the two year anniversary is approaching do expect to you know hopefully if you know I can keep up my motivation and so forth, um, do expect you know more videos in a couple of weeks because that is when I'll be having holidays. But anyway, that's all for this video. Um, again, not much I have to say about rational, uh, sorry, uh, rational cur uh, maps, but they will be coming up a lot. So do you remember these definitions? This is just some examples. I don't know how well I explain that, but um, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I've waffled so much that, yeah, just, just, you know what, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh.